Experiment 26 is very similar to last week's experiment in the sense that it's a qualitative experiment, except you will be asked to develop your own scheme for identifying the unknowns. You will determine the unknowns based on observations made by mixing the unknown solutions and information that you obtain from CRC handbooks, etc. Based on precipitation, the color, and the gases, and the odor should be forming, those type of things. Uh, well, you will be allowed to spot check against the knowns, but that's only spot check. One or two, you should buy from the data that you get at home. It should give you the information you need to make decisions on what, what species is in each bottle. These observations include color, precipitation, meaning the texture of that precipitation. You know, is it grainy? Is it, you know, mushy? Whatever. Uh, how long it takes before that precipitate forms? Sometimes or maybe it forms after a couple of minutes. Uh, does it change color over time? Those little things of observation is going to allow you to, to make some decisions on what's in each uh, species. What you're going to do before lab is that you're going to have to, number one, okay, write in your lab notebook the balanced chemical equation for all 36 reactions. And there's 36 reactions we're going to look at. Um, look at this. I guess it's written down. I got um, some nine species written, eight species written this way and eight species written along the axis here. Um, basically giving you 36 reactions. I've eliminated the ones that are the same because obviously there's no reaction if it's the same thing, reaction with, it, with itself. So what you want to do is write the reaction. So you're looking at silver nitrate and ammonia chloride. You should write the balance reaction for that which in this case you're looking at um, silver nitrate, which is aqueous, plus ammonia chloride, which is aqueous. And what products are going to be formed? Well, that's going to form ammonia nitrate and by solubility rules that's soluble, so it's aqueous, plus silver chloride which is a solid. So you can see by reacting silver nitrate and ammonia chloride, I expect a precipitate, uh, form some solid being formed. So now what I gotta do is go to the CRC handbook and go look up silver chloride and see what kind of color that precipitate's gonna be. Any other things I may notice about silver chloride, okay? Uh, there is an interesting thing about silver chloride is one that that is gonna change color over time because of the fact that it's sensitive to light. That's a key to help me make some decisions when I'm making uh, my observations. You're going to do this for every reaction. Okay, so you're going to write barium chloride and ammonia chloride, potassium chlorate and ammonia chloride, all these down here, and then down to the next one. Okay, all those, you're going to write those uh, balance equations. It ends up being 36 chemical equations. Some of them are going to have solids. Some of them is going to have um, gases formed. you got to keep track of all that. That way you're looking for this when you do your, your actual experiment. So that's step two. Determine what reaction, if any, will occur when two solutions are mixed together by using solubility rules, formation of precipitates, formation of gases, odor, etc. Using permanent references such as your uh, CRC or Merkin, look up the precipitates to determine the color of your precipitates. If there's any gases, you know, make sure you note that as well. Important thing to note, in many cases, there's going to be no reaction, meaning no reaction on your product side. You're going to have aqueous and aqueous, okay? So you're starting off as aqueous and you're ending up in aqueous. Therefore, there's no, no uh, perception being formed, so we're going to say that's no reaction. And as of many of them are going to be no reaction. You're interested in the ones that have precipitates. The more you know, the easier it is going to be to determine the unknowns. Okay, so the more work you do at home, the easier it's going to be when you come to lab. You need to be organized and approach this in a very systematic way to determine which species is in what bottle. So you should come and write this table in your lab notebook, just like I got it written right here, except in these little things you write in here, you know, you know, what kind of precipitate in this box right here, you write what should happen. It should be a precipitate form that's a white color, red color, whatever. It should be a gas. You fill that out, put that in your, your table. Then what we're going to do 
is you're going to do the unknown table in your notebook just as well, and we're going to label this 1 through 8 on your y-axis and on your x-axis 9 through 2. That way we're only doing the 32 reactions again. And then you're going to mix unknown 1 with unknown 9, and you're going to figure out what happens there. Does it form a precipitate? Okay, is it, what color is the precipitate? And you're going to take this data, compare that to your other data for your, um, your, uh, that you collected before lab, and try to figure out which bottles which. Can I give you a hint? One of these species is going to react with everything just about. Okay, well, when that happens, you know it's this particular species. Okay, and go on from there. Another one may react with a couple of them and have a yellow precipitate. Okay, so you're looking for that and trying to come up with some schematic to figure out what is the final answer.